Allison was in the 20s, Boogie Woogie in the 40s, uh, the early rock years. Disco is the thing today. The thing today. The thing today. It became, right in the early 70s, it immediately became a disco world. It was so exciting. I mean, you know, I'm just so grateful that I was part of it. It was a different time. And it was the 70s, it was a different time than it is now. I don't care, they'll bury me here before I'll leave. Disco just exploded, it became, it just became the music of America. The Studio 54 album will be just as though you're at 54, it'll have the same ambiance, everything will be missing, which is Steve selling yeah. the records. Neil had such a vision. Well, Neil's a visionary. He was a believer. You know, I think every record he put on, he believed in, and we sort of connected with that, and we ran with it. We were sort of, we all got excited because we heard what he, we began to hear what he, what he heard. Casablanca was one small place, but now it's everywhere. I remember very clearly the first albums that uh, I bought, Kiss albums, were Kiss Alive 1, Dressed to Kill, Hotter Than Hell, the Old Testament, the original Kiss album, and I remember the Casablanca label on those albums. That, those were the rock and roll days. Uh, Neil had signed some, some rock acts, uh, a couple of Jewish guys from Brooklyn that put a group together, put makeup on, and everybody was making fun of them. And then uh, they had this other wild act, uh, Funkadelic, and Parliament. That and Kiss and Donna Summer were the three biggest, and then they followed up with the Village People. <laughs> It's all over town. Village people are back. When that came out, like, I thought they were awesome. And again, there's Neil. He figured out a way to find guys that all have something different. And we kind of just love that today we're all still doing YMCA. I remember being in a club and, and hearing Heaven Knows, the... I don't know, I had to run and go find somebody to dance with because that, that music was like, I mean, you just went from, from zero to a hundred really quick. Donna Summer put Casablanca Records on the map. She was not only talented, she really had a great voice and still has a great voice. You've got composer-producer Giorgio Moroda creating musical magic from thin air from his disco hits for Donna Summer. Giorgio Moroda produced Donna Summer and Neil went to Germany, went to Germany because he heard about this girl. So somehow she had also met Paul Jabara back then. So fast forward now, Paul Jabara had this song Last Dance and he was pounding on her door in Puerto Rico, saying, you gotta hear this song, you gotta record this song. She loved it. And then, it's my understanding as well, that Neil and Paul came up with the idea of Thank God It's Friday. And the new movie was Thank God It's Friday, with Donna Summer as the star. Oh, baby. The music, the mood, oh, baby. the madness. Casablanca Record and Filmworks, it's everywhere. Just when you think you've heard it all,